Okay, fine. Hi guys, my name is Shanak Nagvekar. And I'm Ishi Singh. And I welcome you all to today's technique session on fundamentals of Figma. Before starting off, I would like to give you a basic definition of what's, what Figma is. Figma is a software which enables you to design interfaces and designs for various applications. It also allows you to add user experience to that particular application that you have designed. Designing with Figma. So Figma offers a wide range of design tools and functionalities. From creating vectors, graphics, to applying layer styles and grids, Figma provides designers with flexibility and precision needed to bring their ideas to life. So one very important advantage of Figma is that it has made collaboration between designers very easy. So designers can collaborate along with each other, uh, taking advantage of the real-time editing comments and version history facilities. Uh, they are taking advantage of all these facilities, which has enabled teams to work together effortlessly. So yeah, before starting off designing on Figma, I have to basically explain you how to create a file in Figma. For that, we'll have to move on to Figma. So I hope you, can, you all can see my screen. So to create a file in Figma, so once you first open Figma, you will be seeing this screen. You can just simply use Control and Option. And this is how you can create a new file. Alternatively, you can also click on this Design File option and select Draft, which will create a new empty file. So I have already created a file which I will be using. OK, so now that you have created your first file, you can create an area called as frames in which you will be adding all your design components. So to create a frame, I select, I'll select this option and then select on frames. This will give me an option to select a, a frame of my, uh, of the size of my choice. And also another, yeah. So now that I've selected this frame, I can also change its dimensions using this option. Alternatively, if I select this frame, I also have this option which can which enables me to choose a, a particular poster of some uh, predefined size for the social media handles or any other device that you are using so, uh, so suppose if you are designing a social media social media poster for instagram so it, it has the uh, predefined dimensions of an instagram post so you can use this and you can start creating the poster now uh, move, after that after now that you have created uh, frames we'll be moving on to sections. So say suppose you're designing multiple Instagram posters. Now, say suppose uh, this is an Instagram post which has multiple posts in it. Now, if you again create a Figma, uh, another post like this, and this as well has multiple frames in it. So it might be very confusing to you uh, to know which frame belongs to which post. So you can use this sections over here to collect them, uh, group them into sections, group them as in to group the frames into sections. So the advantage of creating sections is that it helps you to avoid confusion. So now that you, yeah, you can also add color to these frames or uh, to these sections to make it more beautiful and yeah, more understanding. So now that you have finally created frames and added them into sections, you can use these shapes to create the components of your frames. So I'll just use a rectangle over here. Now that I've created my component, I wish to add a color to it. So yeah, if I click on this fill option and open this, so I can select a color, whichever I want to add to this particular component. Now I can change the strength of the color. So suppose I want to use 100%. I have to take it to this, take the slider to its extreme right. If I use, if I wish to use 0% to the extreme left. Also, I can use this slider to change the color. So say, suppose I want to use something like yellow. You can place it somewhere over here. And yeah, select the color of my choice. Also, like you can change the intensity using this slider. Apart from this solid fill, you can also use gradient. There are four types of gradients, namely linear, radial, angular, and diamond. So to use a, uh, 
linear sorry to use a gradient you get this line and uh, two ends of this line you have to select two separate colors or the same color of your choice now that you selected the colors uh, i'll just change the intensity of this to make it more visible so you see that the colors have uh, fused in properly to form a perfect gradient so this is known as linear gradient you can alternatively you can also use radial gradient like this which creates a gradient uh, in the form of the radial length of the of a circle apart from radial you can use angular which works something like this and finally you have this diamond uh, which creates a gradient in the shape of a diamond so to explain it better i have this already created file with me so you see that in this i've used a radial uh, radial gradient fill and i can now i'm uh, showing how uh, how you can change the colors and how it is changing the color in the existing file fine finally you have this apart from this gradient fill you have another option which is to add a image so say suppose i select the image and then i'll be getting this four options so when i select on fill the entire image that i have will be occupying this uh, image will be occupying this component so it will alter the size of the image such that the entire frame is filled with the image if i select on fit then it will alter the size of the it will alter the size of the image into like fit it into the frame such that the entire frame and entire image is visible inside the frame now moving on to this video section so this section is not available for a, only available for professional accounts moving on now i would like ishi to carry on with the session so hello guys i'll be telling you about variables and styles so um like shonak told us about the fills suppose i want to fill this rectangle with a color green and i have multiple of these rectangles so since i duplicated them they have all they all have the same color but suppose i want to color this square also this color so if we try to find the same color like this it will become very difficult so we can just use this option and make it green or we can also click on this plus sign and make a variable out of it so now i have created a variable name green uh so if i want to create more shapes and i want to fill it with the same color i can just go to fill and then on libraries we'll see the option green same goes for style but in variables you can only save one particular color for styles you can save a gradient also so i'm adding this gradient of green and blue suppose and then i can click on this plus sign so this is a, we can't use variable because that will only save this particular color but if we save it as a style this whole gradient will be saved we can give it a name like green blue gradient create style so if i create another shape like this and i want to fill this with the gradient i can again go to libraries and this is already available we can use the gradient fill for any of the things this is another gradient which we created earlier this is a radial gradient if you want to use the um and like linear one then we can use this one next i'll be telling you about groups and styles so suppose i want to shift these boxes upwards so what i can i can shift them all separately one by one but that's more tedious so you can select you can select all of them and shift them together or you can 
create a group to so to create a group you do control g now as you can see this has already this has become group 99 so every time i select this all three of them get selected and then i can shift them together without them being displaced there's one more option in figma which is called auto layout which is similar to group but it has many more functionalities uh, to ungroup this we can just do control shift g and it ungroups and then if we select all of these again and we click shift a it adds auto layout now what auto layout does is it all uh, puts them in such a way that so that it the um gap between all of them is equals and then we can change the gap also or there are more options like i suppose we extend this and we cl double click on this then it becomes like this this is called auto so the space between them is automatically changed according to the size of the box if i click auto and then i can when i change this it auto layouts on its own there are more options like this so now the auto layout is in a straight line as you can see auto layout is also used um to create buttons so suppose i have a text and i simply draw a rectangle on it so every like to have this thing so every time i change the length of the text i'll have to auto it will have to manually change the length of this rectangle but if we use auto layout then it will change on its own so if we can just write here and then select this and um shift a again so it makes a frame for it and then i'll add a fill so you can see so if i increase the length of the text the box will also increase accordingly and uh this option is for the sides corner radius so we can just increase this then the corners will be rounded and increase as well now we can see we have rounded corners uh the next thing i'll be teaching you is components and variables so suppose this this is how we use we create components and variables and this is one of the components so now it has properties and this is if we select default then we can just change them like this so suppose you're designing something for a ui you are making a ui design and you need a button to react in a certain way when you click them so to tell everyone and the developers how it works you can just make a component and then show them like this so to create this i'll just use this for example so this is a button we just created a while ago and if we click on this then it becomes a component a component is shown with this purple line selection and if we click this then it adds a variant to it so right now it's named variant 2 let's let that be as variant 2 or you can just rename it also like make it red suppose and then you can change any of the properties of this like i am changing the color inside this or you can also change the text inside it now if i copy this and paste it here if you see this empty diamond shape it means it's a component so i can just from this option change it to and now this is how you use variables and components
we can add more of these variants like um just anything else so now this also gets added here if we click variant 3 then it'll turn into this now shauna will be taking over and he'll be telling us about plugins Yeah, so now that Ishi has explained you most of the core concepts of designing in Figma, I'll be moving on to explain you about plugins. So basically, a plugin, as you all know, is an additional software or an external software that you add to an already existing software to improve its functionality. Basically, it acts like a steroid to the already existing software, which in this case is Figma. So yeah, you can learn about these plugins through various uh, design sources which are available over the internet. Uh, like you can read articles on them and you can find about the plugins and use this according to, to your use. So yeah, if you right click on a frame in, in order to use a plugin, so you'll find this plugin option over here. Now I, all, I have all these plugins which I have recently used. So they, they appear to me over here. But in, in order to find a plugin, you have to first click on this manage plugins and search for the plugin over here. So these are all the plugins that I have searched uh, before and download, used them earlier. But if I am to find new plugins, suppose noise. So if I don't have it down, if I never used it before, it will show me this wherein I have to run. Run as in I will be selecting a component and it will run on that particular component. So I don't want to use this for now, but I'll be explaining you using this Iconify plugin, which is one of the most popular plugins. So Iconify allows you to search for uh, icons over the internet. So see, suppose I want a grid icon and uh, I want to suppose a cup. It will find cup for me which I can use in my design. So see, suppose I'm designing a mobile application and I want a toggle menu. Maybe just the home button. Yeah. So it will show me this home button. I can, I can export this. So if I click on this, it will show me this and I can import this into my frame. So now if I check my frame five, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I didn't see this. It has finally imported onto my frame. And now say suppose this is a file, a design file. So I can, usually you see the home button on the top left. I can place this over here uh, so that uh, it acts as a home button. I, I'll have to add the functionality to it. So basically this is, this plugin is used to find uh, images over the internet. Now moving on, I can also use more plugins. So suppose I want to use a plugin which can help me remove the background. So since this image does not have a background, it won't work in this. But there are multiple images in which you see unnecessary background and you want to remove it. So you can just run this and it helps you remove the background and just clip the main part, clip the main part of it. You can also use a vectorized uh, plugin which helps you to add, uh, you know, a grainy texture to your images. Apart from this, you can... I, this is one of my favorite plugins, QR code generator. So if I just, you know, type in a site, say suppose www.github.com, sorry, will create a QR code for the same. And if you scan this, it will take you to the same place. Since I'm on a, I won't be able to scan this for now, but if you guys have the time, I would request you to please scan this and see where it takes you. Okay, so now that we're done with plugins, 
I'll be basically explaining you how to export this uh, designs that you've made into your local storage. So now that you have made this completed with you have completed with these frames, you can select the frame, and as you go down over here, you'll find this export option. So you can select the file of your choice what you want. So I'll select it. Uh, I'll keep it to PDF, and I click on export frame file, and, and I'll save it on in my desktop. And yeah, now it will be downloaded on my desktop and I can open it from there. So this is all about uh, using plugins and exporting the frame. And now I would like to hand over the session to Ishii to finally deal with the remainder of the session. Hi guys, next I'll be telling you about exporting. So uh, suppose you want to export a design, like um, suppose you want to export this file when you just scroll down and you'll see this export option it says export frame file and this is being exported as a pdf or you can change it and choose whichever file type you want to export it and then just click this button it will automatically get saved to whichever you can change the name and save it to whichever file you want to save it to and then you can uh, share it or use it however you want to i'll also be telling you about screen mirroring so screen mirroring is a feature in Figma in which you can um, mirror the design on your phone. So for that, you'll be needing the Figma app on your phone. If you click on any of the frames and then you get this option to mirror it. So you just mirror it and then you can see uh, the design on your phone. So suppose you're making an Instagram post and want to see how it will seem when they see it on their phones on Instagram, then you can mirror it that way. It'll be, you can see it like this. And lastly, I'll be telling you about prototyping, which is mainly used for UI UX. So I created these three pages and uh, I click on prototype. So now you can see what, how they work. So basically what I did was I connected this button to this page. So when we click next, it goes to this page. And then this back button, I click connected it to this. So it goes back to the previous page, similarly next to this, this page. And this is back to page one. You can also, um, suppose I duplicate this and then create one more button. So you can see this one is connected to that. This is also connected to the first page. I can just change that and make it back to page two and then make connect this to this instead. And remove this. So now if I click on flow, I can play it. And then you can see how they change when you click on the different buttons. See, if I click on next, it goes to page two, where there will be two more options. Uh, on clicking which it goes to the next page, for some reason it's not showing right now, but that's how it, works um to create these i i'll just demonstrate how these are created once more so suppose this is the first page i'll remove this connection as well and this needs to go to this page suppose when i hover over this button you can see these circles these are used to connect it so if i connect this to this page then i get options so there are three options on how i more than three options on how i want to do it so if i click instant the moment you click on it it transfer to transfers to that page without any animations dissolve is a similar thing uh, it dissolves into that next page and smart animate is uh, what i showed all, uh, earlier and um Apart from these options, for smart animate, there are these 
different options which you can use and also you can select the time it's 300 milliseconds right now and over here there are options like scroll with parents so suppose in this page if i have select this as close scroll, scroll with parents and i make this page longer then when you uh, mirror it and scroll then this um uh, button will scroll with the page but suppose you fix it like stay fixed so even if you scroll this this won't move from this area you all can play around with these and just see how they work and now shonak will i'm passing it on to shonak to complete the session i discussed most most of the part of the files uh part of the session so uh i would rec- i mean i would definitely recommend you to go on to your figma file fig- download the figma application or you can also use it on the web browser and please try out whatever we have discussed in order to better understand the uh, concepts that were discussed in this session and yeah finally i would uh, thank you all to attend us attend this session thank you